Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. We have the latest Squadron 42 monthly report, so let us break it down. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members, in particular to my latest channel members, Mr. Ravenger, Warren3174, and Creature. Thank you all so much for the support. So first up, we have the AI content team, who made improvements to the interactivity aboard the Javelin by introducing dynamic conversations, greetings, and I'm busy dialogues for the NPCs. They say that this was in response to playtesting as it became evident that players sought closer interactions with NPCs, prompting the integration of reactive responses. They also reduced the length of the cargo trolley to four boxes as it decreases the time spent stacking and unstacking and increases travel time, which was apparently preferred, plus elevator travel with the trolley was polished to eliminate clipping issues upon exiting elevators, and an extra front stack spot was incorporated for enhanced trolley functionality, as they say the NPCs looked a bit robotic without it. So it sounds like a lot of playtesting is going on there just to help refine every aspect of the campaign to ensure that it feels and plays perfectly, which should certainly pay off when it's released. Now, the bed mattress was rigged for defamation, enabling realistic movement when NPCs sit or sleep on it, adding an additional layer of detail to the environment. Now, this, I am sure, is a kind of love it, hate it thing. Some will think it's a waste of time. Others, like myself, love the depth and the detail that they always go to, as it's the small things that really stand out for me personally. So I'm more than happy for this and look forward to seeing how it looks in game. Of course, it has nothing to do with actually improving the gameplay by any means, but they are really pushing that quality bar level and keeping an eye for detail, and I do love that. Now, the final touches were also applied to bunk bed animations, enhancing the realism of NPC actions such as sitting, reading, watching TV, and sleeping for a more immersive experience. NPC interactions with wall-based buttons, like elevator buttons, for example, can now be accommodated for a 45-degree approach. Furthermore, AI can actually carry boxes and press buttons simultaneously, eliminating the need to drop an item and interact with the door or elevator controls. So again, nothing overly major in terms of gameplay, but this kind of thing will certainly let the game play out a lot smoother and make it feel less like a game while we're playing it. Uh, and finally, for the AI content team, refinements to scripted walking behaviours within the ship's corridors are ongoing to ensure that NPCs move convincingly while avoiding critical scenes. Next up, we have the AI features team, who are continuing to iterate and polish features for specific level scenarios. They also work through tech debt, which I always love to hear about, and have been refactoring the AI weapon system to remove bugs simplify the code, and make the development of new functionality and features easier. Now this I feel will help to ramp up the development of AI and their behaviours and abilities much more going forwards, which will be so necessary for not just getting an NPC population in the verse feeling real, but also important for NPC crews when hiring an NPC to work for us. So keeping it clean, getting all of this tech debt covered, organising it and fixing the current issues will put them in a great position for going forwards. Now for the AI tech team, it says they fixed bugs and made small improvements to NPCs using elevators and trolleys to move boxes. And it is going to be very cool at landing zones and locations, having NPCs coming along, pushing these trolleys, loading boxes onto them and then loading or unloading your ship. And I'll just sit back with a coffee and watch in awe, provided everything goes smoothly, of course. Now, the team also progressed with the major task of improving and polishing NPCs driving ground vehicles, which involved adding a new path follower for driving movement requests. Another heavily important aspect here for AI is having them capable of driving these ground vehicles competently and not dangerously, so nice hearing more work has progressed on that one. Finally, the team also implemented an improved controller system for vehicles, and now NPCs will stick closer to the designed path without overshooting during turns, with the big step being iterating on the collision avoidance system to work as intended when NPCs need to avoid other ground vehicles or characters. And yes, that would certainly be preferable. For the animation team, they worked on animations and design work for multiple story scenes and background elements 
including life aboard the core ships and on various space stations. And I suspect a lot of this work on the background elements can be shared with the PU as well, so making every necessary environment look populated and realistic. Progress was also made on EVA, combat animations for various enemy classes and assets, and design for utility functionality as well. And now the team are currently improving AI leisure on the core ships and working toward a final result for the first two dressing animations. And so by core ships, I believe they are just referring to the main sort of capital ships that the player is spending most of their time on, like the Javelin or Idris. And these dressing animations will be interesting to see, as it would be nice to see more of a dressing animation play out when players are equipping or unequipping clothing, rather than it just popping on or off. I know they have that plan for helmets, but it would be cool to see that with every other item as well. Now, next up, we have the gameplay story team, who made substantial progress on Chapter 1. New mocap was also shot to overhaul several of Chapter 1 scenes, and is currently being implemented and alongside this, text now appears on a character's Moby Glass as they dictate a message, which is kind of cool. I think that might be the first scene where we first join our character, perhaps. Now, for Chapter 4, it says a huge update was completed on a complex two-person scene, with data pads now being holstered or unholstered, which they say looks a lot better. And finally, the team received further audio and facial data for Chapter 5, which was incorporated into the relevant scenes. I really hope with these data pads that we can have them as players in the verse and actually use them to take notes on, to make, you know, write notes for ourselves, to remind ourselves about things, or leave them for people lying around. I think that would be a real cool addition. Now, for the narrative team, they continue to close out work, adding additional touches throughout the campaign, including text for numerous fluff terminals and screens, as well as non-interactable set dressing items that provide opportunities for world building like a TV screen that will display news headlines of the day. Now, that is going to be really nice, as Squadron 42, if you're unaware, is set a few years before what we are technically playing now in the PU. I think it kicks off around 2945, so it should marry up with the events of that date and will be quite a nice Easter egg for any lore buff. Text passes were also completed for several mission-specific discoverable items that needed fleshing out, and I will certainly be looking everywhere for all of the secrets and collectibles. And finally, the narrative team continued to review the levels with a mind toward polishing and improving the storytelling and narrative pacing of gameplay moments. Now, moving on to tech design, they provided interactable support across many chapters and began an initiative to optimize the implementation of the AI usable coordinator. And for flight, the AI was reworked to make enemies more difficult and responsive, and the combat test level was updated to help assess the changes. Now, there has actually been quite a lot of work to the AI flight capabilities, getting that implemented into Alpha 323, apparently making them far more capable and a lot more human-like as well. So, great stuff. I am yet to test this myself, but very excited to hear that work's going on. Now, various flight-related bugs were fixed, including issues with quantum travel target selection, AI not using gimbals, and the Cutlass being invulnerable when shot from behind. For the UI team, they have been working on player-facing UIs used at specific locations to support key plot points, and currently they are optimizing the game's opening level to improve the player's first experience, with better storytelling and increased frame rate. Now, finally, for the UI team, the devs worked on UI scene in cinematic sequences, designed brand visuals and created screens that the actors can react to at key points. Maybe even news reports, I guess. If they're watching the TV and they see the attack on Vega, maybe that will encourage a bit of a reaction from the AI. Now, finally, we have the visual effects team. They continued their ongoing support for other teams, which involved a focus on optimizations, particularly for some of the more intensive scenarios in the game. So there you go. That was a very brief monthly report for Squadron 42. Obviously, there's a lot less going on for Squadron because now it is polishing, refining, optimizing, getting it to look as good as possible, to play as good as possible, and feel as good as it can as well. It also sounds like a lot of optimizations are going on right now, and although we have no idea how long this polishing and optimizing phase will take, it is certainly feeling like it's getting much closer to release. My guess, if I was to guess, 
would be sometime next year, maybe early on, but more likely mid to late 2025, which would be amazing in itself. But as I say, that is just a guess. With that said, though, I will be now working on the Persistent Universe monthly report, as well as trying to get some 323 footage and gameplay together. If you do appreciate my videos, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. Also, come and hang out over at twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. You are all more than welcome over there. We are trying to play as much 323 as possible, checking out all that it has to offer. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, it does the channel a big favour, and tick that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Cannot do this without you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.